All right, today in Foundations of Math and Pre-Calculus 10, we're going to talk about 7.6. This is your lesson for uh, 7.6. We're going to talk today about uh, properties of systems of equations. Okay, so we're going to talk about three different types of systems, and we're going to talk about um, the number of solutions that we have for these types of systems, and we're going to just identify some properties. It's a pretty simple lesson here today. So the first system we're going to talk about would be a system of equations that look something like this. All right. Now these are two lines that have one solution. You can see how there's one intersection point? We've talked a lot about uh, the graphs of systems, right? And every one that we've done so far has been something like this where we can identify one solution and that's at the intersection point. That's what we know. So there's one solution for this type of system. Now, what I mean by this type is what we're going to focus on with the properties. So what is a common property to this um, graph as well as maybe let's do some more over here. Okay, so these are all going to be um, system uh, type A. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to draw this one. I'm going to draw this one. I'm going to draw this. And this. And this. So these ones all have one solution. There's a solution there, there's the solution there, there's the solution here, here's the solution there, and one there. Now, they all look a little different, but if you were to look at each line in each of these systems, I'll go back over here to the big one, what do you notice for sure that is different about these lines? You may say, well, I know it's different, I know the wider steps are different. Yes. That's true. Good for you. Over here, this one, they both are intended to meet at the origin. So it looks like they have the same y-intercept. Okay, so that's not a key property here. What is something that is the same for all of these graphs in all of these situations? And the property is that what I'm trying to zero in on here, it has to do with the slope or the slopes of the lines involved. If you said the slopes are different, that's exactly the property that I want to highlight here today. So in every uh, system of this first type, that is with one solution, the slopes are always different. That's the only thing that matters. Are the slopes different? Then you have system type A. You have a one solution system. Okay, let me say that again. If the slopes are different, you know that there is one solution to this system, and it looks something like this, where there is an identifiable uh, intersection point. That is type A, one solution, and the property that's important is the slopes. What that means is, um, graphically it's easy to notice, but let's say you have something like this, right? Like y equals 3x plus 2, and uh, you have 2y minus 4 equals 6x. And I say to you, well, you know, what, how many solutions do you have here? What you'd have to do is you could either graph it and take a look. You could get both of these into the same format. So we could both get both of these into y equals mx plus b, which this would be simplified would be y equals 3x plus, uh, plus 1, okay? And you would look at this and you'd say, okay, look at the slopes. The slopes, are they different? Ooh, actually, no, the slopes are identical. The y-intercepts are different. So if the slopes are the same, you know you don't have one of these. You have to have the slopes being different for them to fall into this category. So Really, um, let me just move this here for you. So this one right here, with the slopes being the same, they're in a different, it's in a different category. So I'm going to take that. I'm actually going to move that down here because we need to make, make a new category where the slopes are the same. Now, if I were to draw this, and I'm going to work backwards here, okay? Um, if I were to draw this right here, these two graphs, so let's do that. This is going to be system two. And the graphs would look something like this. Um, I have a y-intercept of 2. 
and a slope of 3, so ballpark, say it's like that. This one has a y-intercept of 1, and the same slope, slope of 3. So if these lines have the same slope, sorry about my freehand there, if these lines have the same slope, they are what? Okay, if you said parallel, you're exactly right. So these lines right here have the same slope. That means they're parallel. And um, how many solutions does this type of system have? If they're parallel, where do they meet? Where's their intersection point? Uh, they don't have one. <laughs> so in this type of situation, there are no solutions. Okay, so the properties are the lines are parallel. Slopes are different. I'm sorry, slopes are the same. Identical. Okay. Slopes are identical. Now we're going to come back. I need to put one more uh, one more property in here. Okay, but these are the first two. Okay, the slopes are identical. That means they're parallel. And no solutions. What's the third category where, okay, we've got one solution, we've got no solutions. The third category is a system where there are lots of solutions. Now, this one might be a little harder to think of. And I know some of my students said, well, I know where there's lots of solutions. If one is a straight line and the other one is not a straight line. There's lots. Yes, that's true. But we are talking about systems of linear equations. So that's not allowed to have a curved one. So if we, if we think about this, a straight line, that has more than one solution, it has to intersect at more than one spot, or think about it this way. Both lines are the same line. They're identical. Now that's no, it's not cheating. Don't you think, oh, that's kind of cheap. If we have two identical lines, how many solutions do we have? Well, it would mean that every point on the line is a possible solution. Every point. Which means that we have an infinite number of solutions. Okay. An infinite number of solutions. And what are the key characteristics of identical lines, two lines? They have the same what? Same slope. And they also have the same what else? What else is common here to both these lines? Slope and... Yeah, you got it. Y-intercept. Same slope and same y-intercept. Notice, in situation two, we had different y-intercepts. That's two different lines that are parallel, see? But if they're the same y-intercept, they're the same line. So what do we need to add to the properties here for uh, system number two? I'm just going to erase this for you. We need to add one more thing here, don't I? They're parallel, which means their slopes are identical, but what else distinguishes system two and system three? different y-intercepts. And uh, that is super important here. So, system two, slopes are identical, but the y-intercepts are different. In system three, where there's an infinite number of solutions, there's the same slope and the same y-intercept. All right, now there are that's the, that's the basic lesson for 7.6 right there, the three different types. Now, I think I have, uh, oh yeah, right here, I want to show you this. There's, this is from your textbook, and this is sort of system one here. This is type one. One solution, two lines, different slopes. Situation two is where they have, we have parallel lines, and there's no solution because they never intersect. That's the definition of parallel lines. They do not intersect. Now, there's a fancy word in your textbook called coincident lines. You know, you know the term coincidentally? Well, coincidentally, the same thing happened to me, right? So coincident means same. Oh, that's a coincidence. Happened to you, happened to me. Same thing happened to me. So it's the same. So you have two lines that are the same. And, of course, it shows up just as kind of one line. But. And there's an infinite number of solutions. That is, every point on both lines are a solution to the system. Okay. 
Now, one other thing that I will suggest to you here, okay, and this is something, if you understand this, you'd be able to do this. So y equals, let's say I have this line, 2x minus 5, and I asked you to give me a second line, an equation for a second line, that fit in the first type. Okay? So give me a second line where there's only one solution. In your head, what you would think of is, okay, the only thing that's important is that the slopes are different. And this is y equals mx plus b. So I can have the exact same everything else, but I have to have a different slope. So, done. As long as this number is different from this one, you have one solution. See that? One solution. Now, you could have changed this as well. Maybe you changed the intercept as well. No problem. Different lines with different slopes. That's situation one. Now, if I said, okay, give me another equation here that would qualify for situation two. So that is that there are no solutions. No solutions. Okay? And you would say to yourself, well, I go back to my chart. And the lines have to be parallel. That means they have identical slopes, but different y-intercepts. So that's no problem at all. So this is the one that you keep the same now. y equals 2x. And this number has to be different. Doesn't matter what it is. Plus 100. There you go. See that? See how easy that is? You just look at your chart. You think about it. So these lines will be parallel. One will be going through negative 5. And one will be going way up here to 100. It's parallel. Never, ever meet. All right, so if I asked you for another line that qualified for situation 3, well, that would be pretty easy, wouldn't it? You could just do this. Um, there you go. Same line. And you would be just perfectly correct to do that. Now, remember, if I gave you this, Mm -hmm. that's the same line as well. So you have to recognize that, hey, if I've multiplied everything by 10 here, then that's still the same line. It just looks a little bit different, right? Or if I multiplied, you know, everything by 0.1, hmm, that's the same line as well, okay? So when you get it into y equals mx plus b form, or a similar form anyways, like this, the same form for both lines, if they look exactly the same when it's all simplified, um, then you have situation three, and that would be an infinite number of solutions. What's the sign for infinity? Remember? This one here. An infinite number of solutions. Okay? <laughs> Whatever you want to do, that's, that's fine. All right, so that's your little lesson on, uh, on 7.6. That's the properties of systems of equations, and there are three main types. Um, the main system that we've been working with here uh, and we've solved graphically, we've solved through substitution, through elimination. Um, uh, that is system, sort of the first one, where there's one solution. B is system where the lines are parallel. They have different y-intercepts, and there's no solution in that, that option. And situation number three is where we really we have coincident lines. with the same lines, and we have an infinite number of solutions. And those lines, the properties are, they have the same slope the same y-intercept. So that's your lesson for 7.6, properties of systems of equations.